Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 26th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see first topic. So first topic it is about bail law. So title says reform bail law but make the right diagnosis first. So first of all, we have to see what is this bail law. So this will be very important from our quality point of view, which mainly comes under your GS paper too. And there are high chances of getting this bail law in your upcoming means. So now let us try to see the context. So recently Supreme Court underlined that there is a pressing need for reform in the law related to bail and called on the government to consider framing a special legislation on the lines of the law in UK. So in United Kingdom, so there is one law which mainly talks about this bail. So in the same way, we can also come up with law in India, so which especially deals with this bail. So this is a thing which mainly said by our Honorable Supreme Court. So if you see details, it mainly says that here recently two judge bench of Supreme Court and it mainly clarified some clarifications in order to give or deliver judgment in July 2021 on bail reform in this case of Satender Kumar until versus CBI. So in this judgment here, Supreme Court referred to the state of jails in the country and it also said that about two thirds of cases they are lodged in the uh, in the Supreme Court and as well as uh, so actually so how many uh, members or how many prisoners they are present in the jail so among them two thirds of them are just under trails the Supreme Court underlined that arrest is a draconian measures that need to be used sparingly so because of increasing of under trails in the jails and there is increasing of uh, prisoners in the jails what happened beyond the capacity of that jails so here we can go for giving of bails rather than arresting so arresting the arresting the prisoners or arresting the people actually on those people there is nothing like there is a proof of doing that so and so thing right so here because of this here supreme court said that it is a draconian measure so this we need to go for bail okay and we need to go for arresting it should be very very less and of this category of prisoners so majority of them they are poor and illiterate and most of them they include even women so court also linked the idea of indiscriminate arrest to magistrate ignoring the rule of bail not jail to colonial mindset so here we have to go for bail not jail so if we're talking about law on bail in india so we have criminal procedure code so this criminal procedure code does not define the word bail but only categorizes offenses under the ipc as bailable and non-bailable so here criminal procedure code which empowers magistrates to grant bail for bailable offenses as a matter of right so now granting the bail it is like a matter of right and under this crpc so it even empowers magistrate to po to provide this gray bail or to grant this bail for bailable offenses so if there is any offense we can provide bail means yes here the crpc empowered magistrate to grant bail and if you're talking about this non-bailable offenses they are cognizable that means your police officer they can arrest without a warrant as well so if you're talking about this uk law so bail act of uk united kingdom 1976 so this law which prescribes the procedure for granting the bail and one of the important and key feature of this law is the important aim of this law so important aim it is like to reduce the size of in inmate population and next one here is law also has provisions of ensuring legal aid for this defendants as well so these are some important provisions of this law bill of uk and this act which recognizes general right to be granted bail and for rejecting bail so prosecution must show that the grounds exist for believing the defendant on bail would not surrender to custody okay so these are some important provisions that are present in this uk's bail law and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding monkey pox virus so as you all know that number of times we discussed about basic facts regarding this monkey pox 
now this is the time to revise all those things so it is your duty now so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under science and technology and now we are going to talk about what are the steps that can be taken by government of india so this comes under our governance point of view under policies and programs of government so now let us try to see this topic in detail so as you all know that recently who that is world health organization it mainly declared this viral outbreak as PHEIs that is public health emergency of international concern okay so WHO declared it as PHEIC so with four cases confirmed in India around 14,500 cases globally so here there are about 14,500 cases they were recorded globally that means in the more than 72 countries there were there were this case of the monkey pox they were identified and because of this it mainly triggered international con uh, consternation in the world that is yet to recover from this global pandemic that is COVID-19. So still we didn't come out of this global pandemic and one more pandemic that is entering into our life that is monkey pox virus now. So it is one cause of concern. So this public health emergency of international concern it is a one just one just step okay below this pandemic so if you want to declare one this is a pandemic so first we are going to declare it as PHEIC and later on we will be declare it as pandemic so following the declaration of this COVID-19 pandemic on March 2020 as this PHIC and later on what happened there is rapid spread of this COVID-19 in different countries which is mainly seen so because of this finally we came up with declaring that COVID-19 as a global pandemic and though monkeypox is caused by a virus that is endemic in few African countries, so the world took a note only after it was first reported in UK on May 6th, 2022. So actually, actually this monkeypox virus, which mainly a monkeypox disease, which mainly caused by virus and this virus, which is endemic in this few African countries. And actually, we mainly took first step regarding the reporting of this monkeypox virus in UK in May 2022. So within a month, okay, within one and a half month, so this virus which mainly spread to more than 63 countries, especially Spain, Belgium, US, etc. So where in these areas, we do not see commonly this virus. But in these areas also, so this virus which became endemic, okay, so we can find the cases where where this virus it is non-endemic as well so that may lead to spike in the cases of this monkey pox disease so monkey pox for now so this is more visible manifestations we can see like rashes and we can see blisters how we can face the blisters in small pox and chicken pox so in the same way we can see blisters all over the body okay and it is believed to spread only through the close contact and it is also fatal only to extremely immunocompromised people so in this context, WHO declared or recommended the countries and said that your countries need to take some proper surveillance and we need to amplify public awareness campaigns and government need to work towards non-stigmatizing the disease and we need to focus on proper health infrastructure etc. And even government need to provide proper diagnostic or kits for this identification of this monkeypox. So this is about this topic and if you're talking about what is the need, what can be done? So government must begin a coordinated action. So here government, so we need to come up with international collaboration and we need to come up with a coordinated action. So coordinated action should be present between the countries and even between the center and the state and as well as states in the states. So as such that we can, we can, uh, we can mainly prevent or we can take some proper steps to decrease the risk as well. So actually if you are talking about this uh, monkey pox disease, so it mainly comes in the category of neglected tropical diseases. So it is related to eradicate, it is related to eradicated smallpox virus and actually this monkey pox virus is suspected to have amplified. Why? Because there is loss of immunity or reduced immunity against this smallpox virus in the people. So because of this, the intensity and amplification of this monkey pox virus is high. And Indian labs and some biotech companies, they need to take some steps in researching and they need to come up with adequate defenses against this monkeypox virus. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to say next topic.
title says the private sector boost in india's space industry so this article is very important from your science and technology which mainly comes in the gs paper 3 and especially this topic is important from your mains point of view so now let us try to see why it is in news so principal scientific advisor he stated that this month the government would soon come up with a new space policy so here government of india it is going to come up with a new space policy and in this space policy so government is focusing to increase private sector participation in this space industry so because of this we are talking about privatization of this space industry so consultations have already been held and also government of india came up with final version of policy and it also referred to empower technology group it is on further examination okay so this is about context that is why easy news so now let us try to see why development in space sector is important so if you are talking about potential of space sector so when we are in enhancing or when we are upgrading our space technology so this will be having multiple benefits right so it will mainly bolster connectivity and it will be helpful to combat the climate related implications and it will be like more secure and effective means as well so if you are coming up with different satellites and we are launching satellites in the different uh, different orbits like low earth orbit medium middle earth or medium earth orbit and high earth orbit so what happen these satellites they provide accurate information so accurate information on weather forecast accurate information that will help to assess long term trends in climate habitability etc so for example so we can go for monitoring long term impacts of climate change at regional level at territorial level and national scales etc and next one here is they can also serve as real time monitoring and early warning solutions against the natural disasters for example earthquakes tsunamis floods wildfires mining etc so this is also very important and next one here is where does india stands in the global space market so if you are talking about india space market so as per the space tech analytics so india stands as a sixth player in the industry and it is internationally which is having about 3.6 percentage of world's space technical companies or tech companies so it is a data as per 2021 so this data is very important and you can add this uh, data into this data book like according to the space tech analytics so india it is a sixth largest player in this industry internationally and we are having about 3.6 percentage of world space tech companies and in your space industry the value here is dollar 7 billion in 2019 and it also aspires to grow to dollar 50 billion by 2024 so this data is also very important and india holds the distinction of being the first country to have reached mars orbit for in the first attempt and also the cost is very much less compared to that of western standards that is just dollar 75 million it is a way cheaper than compared to that of western standards and if you are talking about what is the significance of india's role in this space sector or we can talk about so what will be the significance what will be the advantage when there is a private players who are entering this space sector so private sectors involvement in the long term as with other commercial sectors it will leads to increasing of investment so it will spur investment and also expertise in the realm so which a which is a capital intensive and as well as demands high technology so private sector involvement in the long term will helpful to get the good technology and even so that will helpful for the capital intensive and we can have the good demand okay in the international market so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says kangaroo courts by media agenda driven debates weakening democracy says cji so this article which is talking about so how this kangaroo courts by media and agenda driven debates how it is weakening the democracy and we can also talk about role of judiciary here so this article will be important from your gs paper to under polity 
So now let us try to have a detailed discussion and let us try to understand this topic. So if you see context, our India CJ that is Chief Justice of India, so he highlighted some concerns. Some concerns like ill-informed and agenda-driven debates and biased views. So these are some important reasons for the weakening of our democracy. So if you see some details, so we are talking about especially the role of judiciary. As you all know, we have three organs of our state. We have executive, we have legislature and we have judiciary. So judiciary is one of the important organ of our state which breeds the life to our constitution. So whatever the laws which are mainly made by this executive and legislature, so they will be interpreted by the judiciary. And if they are not according to our constitution, they will be made null and void. So because of this, we can say judiciary is one of the important organ which breathe life into the constitution. And in the judiciary, we have one important weapon that is judicial review. So the judicial review of legislature and as well as executive actions, they forms an important integral parts of our constitutional scheme. And even this is one of the heart and soul of the Indian constitution. So we are talking about other concerns regarding the judiciary. Yes, we are having the media trail of judges. So doing justice, it is not an, uh, not an easy task actually. It is, a, it is not an easy responsibility as well. So at times, there are also concerted campaigns in media. Particularly, they are criticizing the judges. They are against the judges. And new media tools, they have enormous amplifying ability but appear to be incapable in distinguishing so what is the what is the right and what is wrong what is good and what is bad so what is real and what is fake so media trails cannot be the guiding factor in deciding the cases and this one is there is no accountability especially if you're talking about print media they have a certain degree of accountability so but if you're talking about electronic media they have zero accountability and there is no protection, especially politicians, bureaucrats, police officers and other public representatives. They provide with the security even after their retirement. Okay, but for the judges, there is no extended similar protection like politicians, bureaucrats, police officers, other public representatives. And next one is adjudication of cases. So one of the biggest challenges they are facing by the judiciary is prioritizing the matters because there are bundles and bundles of cases they are pending so they are facing one challenge like so which case to be picked up that is the one important thing next one is poor judicial infrastructure so there have been a knee jerk reactions to augmenting infrastructure in a few places so however there has not been any concrete plan to equip judiciary to meet the challenges of foreseeable future so as you all know, there is increasing of pendency of cases, but there is no proper interest to development to deal with this. So this is the thing which mainly said. And if you're talking about some recommendations, so we need responsible media. So responsible media in the form of printed form, social media, and even particularly electronic media. So media should self-regulate and measure their words. And this one is there is need to strengthen judiciary and even we need to empower the judges as well okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding international court of justice latest judgment in the case of genocide against myanmar so actually if you see the location of myanmar so we are sharing boundary with myanmar so what is the issue in this myanmar so here now we can see military junta and even there is a rakhine state in myanmar so in this Rakhine state, especially genocide happened. So people from this Rakhine state, especially Rohingyas, they are minority people. They mainly fled away from this um, Myanmar and they entered into India, Bangladesh, etc. So now let us try to say this topic. So this is important from international relations, which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So Myanmar's military launched what it, what it called a clearance campaign in this Rakhine state in 2017. Okay, so actually there was an attack by this Rohingya insurgent group. So after that here, these people, they mainly fled into nearby countries like Bangladesh, okay, and India especially. So even there are some allegations like this Myanmar security forces, they accused mass rapes, killings and torching of thousands of these Rohingya homes. And this one here is amid international outrage, 
the treatment of this rohingyas okay so i made international outreach with the treatment of this rohingyas now gambia filed a case case with the world within within this world court in november 2019 and gambia accused that myanmar is breaching the genocide convention so here we have to know about what is this genocide convention so you can get question regarding this topic in mains and even in your prelims so so far only three case of genocide in the world they had been recognized since world war 2 so first one is in cambodia in 1970s and next one is rwanda in 1994 and next one here is serbinica and serbinica in bosnia in 1995 so these were the four case of uh, genocide which is mainly seen and this is the fourth and if you see some details of uh, this international court of justice so which mainly established in 1945 by united nation charter so by this united nation charter in 1945 this icj was established and it started working from 1946 onwards so actually this icj it is a principal judicial organ of this united nations and it mainly situated in this uh, peace palace in hague hague in netherlands and unlike the six other organs of this united nations actually this is the only one organization which not located in this new york it is located in this hague so actually if you are talking about the function of this icj it mainly settles disputes between the states and it also gives advisory opinions in accordance with the international law on legal questions etc and if you are talking about this genocide convention so this is the convention on prevention and punishment of crimes of genocide so this is also called as in simply genocide convention so it is one of the international law and this law codified for the first time the crimes of genocide so according to this convention here genocide is a crime okay if at all if it is takes place during the time of war or time of peace it is a crime so genocide convention it was the first human rights treaty and this treaty adopted by general assembly of united nations and if you are talking about the definition of the crime of genocide so actually it is mainly set out in the convention so it has been widely adopted at both national and international levels and even it is also present in this 1998 rome statutes of ic icc that is international criminal code okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding as told to parliament 34 percentage of india's coastline under varying degrees of erosion so it is talking about coast line erosion so this topic is important from your environment and ecology and even under your geography so this topic is very important and if you see the context why it is in news so as per ministry of earth sciences it says 34 percentage of india's coastline it is under erosion now so especially west bengal which is suffering the worst worst erosion it is about 60.5 percentage of the coast which already threatened by this erosion so if you see some details it mainly says that so what is the meaning of this coastal erosion so coastal erosion is a process by which local sea rise okay whenever there is a local sea level rise is happening so because of this we can see there will be the strong wave action and we can also see there will be the backlash okay so because of this we can see the coastal flooding so because of this coastal flooding so wear and tear which mainly happens okay so they mainly carry away the rocks soil sand along the coast that will lead to this coastal erosion so this mainly includes four main processes like corrosion abrasion hydraulic oxidation and attrition so already we discussed about these topics when we discussed especially regarding this landforms formed by glaciers by ground water etc so if you're talking about the agency which mainly monitors the sea shores or shore lines here is national center for coastal research and this will be very important prelims question and if you're talking about what will be the impact of this coastal erosion that will leads to destruction of biodiversity and that will leads to habitat loss and loss of fertile land and loss of tourism etc so how can we mitigate them so if you're talking about measures to mitigate so coast erosion structure so we can have some sea walls we can have some revetments 
and we can have some bulkheads, groins, breakwaters, etc., such that we can reduce the erosion in short term. And even Indian National Center for Ocean Information Service, that is INCOIS, which published an atlas of coastal vulnerability index, and we can go for mapping of entire coast and we can take the necessary steps. We can also come up with integrated coastal zone management plan. So this plan which is going to ensure optimum suitable use of coastal natural resources as well. And this one is National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management. So here it is mainly focusing to research the areas of this coastal zone management and even talks about the coastal resources and environment. So these are some important articles that appear in this today's Hindu newspaper and this is the current affairs of today. So now let us try to see Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu. Date is July 26 and this is Delhi edition. So first one it is about our president that is Draupadi Murmu is president of India. Okay. So Draupadi Murmu she took oath as 15th president of India on Monday and she created history by coming okay from the tribal community and also she is the second woman to occupy this country's highest post. Okay, so this is about this uh, topic. And next topic here is Myanmar executes political prisoners. Myanmar junta has executed four prisoners including former lawmaker from Aung On Song Suu Kyi's party and a prominent uh, activist state media set on Monday. Okay, so this execution sparked widespread condemnation which highlighted the fears that more death sentences will follow and prompted calls for international community to take some measures against the already isolated junta. Okay, so this is about this thing. So we need to think about that. So let me know whether it is correct or not. And next topic here is no bill to stop attacks on hospitals. So actually if you see if any person who died means relatives or family members, so they will be attacking the uh, attacking the staffs in the hospital. So here what happened the ministry that is health and family welfare ministry which had withdrawn this draft legislation on protection of healthcare workers and uh, healthcare institutions from violence. Okay, actually this uh, bill which mainly this draft uh, which mainly said about there will be the proposed jail term up to 5 years and fine up to rupees 5 lakhs for the offenders. So as of now, so they are not going to pursue this draft legislation. And now let us move forward. So in the city page there is nothing much important in the today's newspaper. And you can directly move on to this page number 5 that is states page here you can see fresh floods in Godavari create panic. So now here because of heavy rainfall and good monsoon flow. So the fresh floods in the Godavari occurring in the second time from the past 15 days. So you have to know about uh, some facts regarding this Godavari where it has been originated and which states it flows and uh, which are the right bank and left bank tributaries and which are the dams which are, pro which are present on this rivers. Okay, so this is very important. And this one here is Punjab Delhi plans SOP standard operating procedures for farmers to stop stubble burning. So yes, winter it is coming soon. Okay, so in this winter, Delhi, especially this national capital territory region, which mainly faces problem because of this stubble burning. So because of this here, government of Punjab and even Delhi, they are going to take some standard operating procedure for stopping of this stubble burning. Right, and if you move forward in this editorial page, there is article regarding this monkeypox, what is I discussed about this. And there is one more article regarding Russia-Ukraine conflict. So already number of time we discussed this topic and you can easily go to that topic. So there will be no issue. And next one it is regarding bail law. I discussed this topic and I want to give you one homework students. So you have to refer about this black back sliding of this climate action. So this article which is mainly talking about this Paris climate deal. So actually the number of countries they mainly come forward and they took a number of steps. They are taking number of steps mainly to control this climate change and even in this recent COP26 there are number of steps they mainly came up and even India announced that we are going to achieve this carbon neutrality by 2070 and China said that we are going to come up with this carbon neutrality by 2060. So here you have to know about what are the provisions under this Paris climate deal. So This will be important. And if you move forward in this text and context I discussed about this private sector in this space industry. And there is one article regarding this latest guidelines on arrest and bail record, bail orders. 
So now let us try, see this uh, article in uh, detail and you have to remember Satyendra Kumar until versus CBI case for sure. Okay, to remember this. So recently a bench, a, div a division bench of uh, Supreme Court in the Satyendra Kumar until versus CBI laid down some fresh guidelines on arrest in order to have strict compliance on provisions of section 41 and as well as section 41A of this uh, code of criminal procedure that is criminal procedure code of 1973. So what is this section 41 and section 41A talks about? So section 41 which mainly provides circumstances in which arrest can be made by the police without a warrant okay and section 41A which mainly provides for the requirement of a notice to be sent by investigating agencies before making an arrest in certain conditions. So these are the two sections that you have to remember. And next one here is high courts they have also been directed to undertake the exercise of finding out the under trail prisoners who are not able to comply with the bail conditions. So these are some important things that you have to remember and apart from that so what are the provisions regarding this UK's law I already discussed. Okay and now let us move forward without any delay. So this article is about studying the menstrual disturbances post COVID-19 vaccination. So I think this topic is not much important and if you are interested so you can go through this article once to know about what will be the impact of this COVID-19. And in this page also there is nothing much important. And in this page number 12 you can see only 4 states adopt model tenancy law. So if the time permits in tomorrow's lecture I go to I will uh, discuss about this what is this model tenancy act. So more than a year since union housing and urban affairs ministry circulated this model tenancy act. So only 4 states they had came up with this revised tenancy laws. Okay, so in response to the question, so there is some information which is mainly given regarding this Model Tenancy Act. So we have to know about what is Model Tenancy Act. So actually this act which mainly aims to balance the rights of tenants and as well as landlords and that will helpful to create accountable and as well as transparent ecosystem for renting purposes. So now let's next topic here is monkeypox virus has evolved and we need to be prepared to roll out intense response says WHO official. So the case of this monkeypox they are being reported from multiple countries. So many of them not seen the case of the virus before right. So here recently they came up with the genomic studies. So this genomic studies had revealed that monkeypox virus seems to have changed over recent years. And we need to go for further more studies to understand the evolution of this new variants. Okay, we are going to see even the new variants of this monkeypox virus soon. And if you move forward in this world space, there is nothing much important. And in this business page, there is one article that is India poised to grow fastest, help drive global growth. So this is the thing which mainly said by Billa. So India is going to achieve, uh, it, it is becoming the one of the fast growing and major economy in the world. And here India is also acting as an engine of global growth. So this is a thing which mainly said by Billa. So he said that economic activity in India had witnessed a sharp recovery to this pre-pandemic levels and we are back off a rapid and widespread rollout of vaccination campaigns. So this mainly helped further revival of economic activities. And we are also having a strong digital economy and as well as a fiscal and monetary policy and, the, and also various uh, government schemes which are mainly helping the small and medium enterprises etc. So these are the things which mainly said by this uh, top, uh, this uh, villa and this topic is important from your economy which comes under GS paper 3. So these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So I want to make a small announcement. So we in Rathors as we came up with this mains answer writing practice course and this course is going to uh, start from this August 1st. So you are left with only 4 days of time so please try to enroll this course. So we are providing weekly targets. So daily one question will be given and there will be practice on essay and as well as uh, case studies on Sundays. So there will be live webinars regarding how to write an answer and we are discussing the answer, uh, questions which are given in that week in at the end of that every Sunday at 7, 7 to 9 okay there will be webinar. So this will be very very useful course and I can promise you that you are going to excel this answer writing skills for sure. 
okay so you can join this mains and setting course and to join this you have to visit our rathodsciencecademy.com website and there you can register with your email id and then you can click on the course list there at last you can see this mains answering practice course daily mains answering practice close and click on the buy now and you can fill the details and do the payment so this will be the very very important course and if you want to clear this upsc you have to improve this answering skills so that you can do in this course so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to rathor science academy if you are new to this channel and you can also click the bell icon so that you can get the regular notifications when you are uploading this video so and one more thing here is you can share this video in the telegram groups or whatsapp groups so that it will be also beneficial for the other aspirants so by this i'm concluding thank you so much